All right. All right, we're live. That's right, I can just look at the chat there too. All right, everyone. Who's, I'm just getting a bunch of, I gotta turn off some, dude, notifications are going crazy. How are we doing, y'all? How is everybody doing? Make sure you guys can hear me well. How are we doing, y'all? All right, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Hey, everybody, check into the stream. Check in. How are you doing, Jan? Where's everybody tuned in from? We're live from Kiev. Obviously not outside. It's past curfew. I think it's, well, it should be, you should be able to go outside again soon, but uh, we have things to do today. I slept a few hours. I'm going to go back to sleep for a little bit after the stream, but I wanted to check in with you guys at prime time hours for my audience, right? And I got to wake up. You can't hear me. Can everybody hear me? Make sure we're good. Is audio video good? Make sure if you can't hear me, might as well just close the stream and come back if you can. Close the stream and come on back. What time is it? It is 4.20 in the morning. Hey, I can't do anything about that, but it's 4.20 in the morning. Okay, audio video are amazing. So we're just going to do a rundown of my first day in Kiev, Ukraine war news. I'm here in, I'm here in Kiev, Ukraine, like I told you guys it would be. Audio is a bit quiet. Uh, I can't, I don't think I can, let me see if I can, I think I can, I don't think I can do anything. we try to turn it up a little bit. How about that? Checking, checking. How about that? Is that better? I got the, the new G, DJI mic, so it's not like a, you know, an at-home microphone. I got the, the new G, DJI mic, so. Yeah, that's a lot better now. I turned it up on the gain. Like, you got, like, this thing is so cool. Hey, highly recommend anyone that wants, mold, like, microphones. Get the DJI mic. No sponsorship. I'm not sponsored by them, but they are they're super good. It's they have a connectability to your phone too, and they come with one for Android and iPhone. I have the iPhone, um, but it's got like the a little a little receiver, like for example, and you plug it into your phone, like that, and then you can and then it's it's it connects automatically. Connected lightning adapter connecting to a pair of headphones, and then you can walk around with this as your phone too. If you do that, it's really really nice. Super nice. Plus, plus, you can't hear me at all. Well, I, you're gonna have to. I don't know what to tell you. you can't hear me at all. I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna have to close the stream and come on back. Well, we're good to go. Audio is great. Perfect. I'm super glad to hear. So, no, yeah, actually, we heard sirens on the way in because, uh, as you guys, if you've been keeping up with the news, the V was hit today, and we're gonna go into the video from today. But it was right after we had crossed the border. And we heard the sirens going off. So, um, yeah. So, five by five. Awesome. All right. Audio is perfect. All right. If your audio isn't, it's your end at this point. It's your end at this point if it's bad. All right. So, we're going to go into the into the trip in case you missed it today. Obviously, you guys are my, even though I have big social media followers or like mid, I guess. I don't have millions, but tens, hundreds of thousands. Um, you guys are still my core audience, you know what I mean, for my daily streams. So, even though maybe you don't... Maybe you don't have Discord or Telegram or Threads, but I'm going to talk about that too at the end. You guys need to follow me on Threads, Instagram's new Twitter. Boy, that that's way better. It, it's the it's not it's not at the potential it's at yet. Well, where Twitter is in terms of like userability and like hashtags and finding news and having a curated list of things that you only care about. It's kind of just like a it's kind of just like a free for all right now. But the whole vibe of Threads right now is way better way better than Twitter like it's it's um it's uh not a you know when you log into Twitter the first thing you see is an anti-Ukraine opinion or like some some stupid pro-Russian or uh, troll thing is trending and then Elon will respond to it like no and Instagram's like a bunch of memes and like OG Facebook kind of people just writing anything like what's on your mind statuses and Don Jr., <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. tried to, he, he made an account and then immediately, like, it's got a, a warning saying this, this account posts uh, fake and bullshit, whatever, and, like, it's been reported many times. Are you sure you want to follow? <laughs> so they already have warning labels for trolls, which is amazing. Like, that's, hell yeah, dude. So I feel like Threads is going to, and again, Threads isn't, it's not, uh, it's, a, it's not at the potential it's going to be at, but that's, I'm going to use it for the same purpose I had uh, Twitter for. And if you don't know, my Twitter was banned. I'm completely I'm banned from Twitter now. My personal account and my media account. 
And I had went viral too. I talked about it in my stream the other day, I guess, like or mid viral, because a couple of the top Twitter trolls had a uh, quote tweeted my video of us leaving saying operational security and blah, 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 bullshit. They don't know what they're talking about, clearly. And I was like, oh man, I'm finally getting some traction on Twitter. Gone, terminated, done. Oh well. And we have, honestly, I looked, we have more people in our Discord server than I had followers on Twitter. And now Twitter was great for reaching like, uh, important people I guess um, that had that were, that are doing things out here but I have a feeling they're not going to be on Twitter for much longer anyways it's a it's a piece of shit it's a piece of shit platform it's becoming a misinformation garbage like political like you maybe one day you don't want to look at political stuff you don't like, you know what I mean it's, it gets tiring it, it does maybe you don't want to look at that shit Twitter is you can't you look away from it because all the all of it's promoted so but all right you guys we're going to get into it I'm here in Kyiv Let's talk about some of the things we didn't do a rundown of, uh, of some of the experiences that I had. Last night, too, I also did a stream, if you missed it, from Poland. Uh, we, we were, I was on the way to the border. And that's me in the car, or in the truck, rather, waiting. I was so dead tired. Super tired. We had, it was like a little under a 30-hour of drive from Tallinn, Estonia, to, uh, to Kiev. And we had to go through multiple countries. I mean, no, I mean, the rest stops were like 15 minutes. Hey, I was in the military and we, we, there was points where we would take long breaks. Not, not in this one. Well, we, and they were on it. Like, hey, we got to get there. We, and that was the motivation though, was uh, the faster we go, the faster we can get to Kiev and then obviously rest like we are now. So we, we got there. We, customs wasn't bad. The, the, the shared experiences of going through the border and here it is. Um, there, it's, it was a, a pain apparently, but for me, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad at all. Uh, you had to show your paperwork. You got to show the vehicle registration and the, you got to show your passport, everything They go through everything. Uh, it, it, but it wasn't that bad actually. And then when we get, you go through the, the Polish border and then you go literally like maybe 300, 400 meters. And then you're in the Ukraine, you're in the Ukraine border and then they go through all your shit too. Uh, and that wasn't as bad. I mean, the Polish side took a little bit of time. And they, they had said that the Ukrainian side was going to be tough, but it actually wasn't. If you just kept all your documents with you, they, they, you, they even give you like another little passport and you had to die. They do stamps on it. You got to make sure you just give it to like three, four people and then you're fine. Then you're already, then you're in Ukraine. It's all, it's, it is what it is. So that was that. We had gotten through the border after the, uh, after the stream I had did yesterday. I was just chilling, driving, uh, in the in the car and then oh look at this look at this guy huh you guys know him immediately right? immediately i've been talking to starsky though since before i left personally uh offline i know you guys only see what you see you know through the stream and whatnot so but offline though we met we've met we message and talk so he, he met right he met us right away that's operator starsky right awesome Awesome, awesome. We met him. We met him. We got, this is at the staging, not the staging area where we're going to be delivering the vehicles. Uh, this is at the place you, we take the vehicles and they get washed and they get the tires on them and the and the uh, night vision. Because if you're wondering, I bet you some of y'all were like, "Yo, where's the mud tires? Where's the where's the night vision?" It's that's we had to take it to this place and it gets fitted with all of that, all of the stuff the soldiers need. We had to bring all the trucks to that location. And then here in a couple, in a few hours, actually, because it's at like 8.30 in the morning, it's at 8.30 in the morning, it's like 4.27 a.m. here my time, we got to go to the, the fortress, the Kiev fortress, and that's where we hand off the trucks to the Ukrainian soldiers. So they get cleaned tonight, washed, fitted with the mud tires, the night vision. I left that JBL speaker in there, so they're going to keep the JBL that I had dri driven in and the car charger, and then I have a couple other things I'm going to give them and, keep, and let them keep. So it was just absolutely, absolutely amazing, right? Star Starsky met us right there, right? We took a group photo. That's Alex and Dimitri from NAFO. And Alex is, I'm, I'm going to be, this is my homie now. He's a Brit, but he's the homie. Yeah, you're going to be seeing him a lot in person, likely, and we're going to be doing shit. He's, uh, he, he's on the shit that I'm on, basically. He's not a reporter or a journalist, but he's about uh, doing the right thing and, and helping. And he went, he, before we went to Tallinn, he was in Riga in, in Latvia doing drones, like getting drones for the Ukrainian soldiers. So like, that's the type of stuff I want to do too. 
Like, I want to do more. I mean, I, obviously, the reporting and talking about my experiences, but also, like, directly helping. Um, like, we can do even more, especially for this next one. But you got Alex, Dimitri, Nafo. I, I talk to him all the time. This is the guy that uh, set up all of the that I, I go back and forth with and get the patches and the dog tags. And this is the guy you guys are talking to right here. Uh, maybe you've messaged about uh, your receipt for the NAFO fundraiser or whatever, and he does all of that, The and his team. They, he's, he's like the guy in the charge. Ragnar's in charge of the whole thing, but he, he like kind of does the, the management aspect of the websites and the, and the, and the, you know what I mean? Like the in and out of the, each individual fundraising. So it's a big, NAFO, the 69th Brigade's a, a big deal. Like they do a lot, like a lot, a lot. Obviously that's me. And then there's operator Starsky. And then you can see all the trucks behind us too. That's the area. My truck's right here. If you guys can see, I'm circling that. I can't really, if I zoom in. Oh, we can zoom a little bit. There we go. That's much better. There we go. Let's fill the screen a little bit. Much better. Okay, so you can see the truck. That's a, that's my truck back there. Uh, I gotta do it again. Uh, I messed up. Hold on. I think I have to go into it at. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing now. Okay, now we can go. There we go. Laptop, laptop shit, dude. Working on a laptop. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. The one thing is, is. Take you, my, my, my computer at home, man, I, I miss that thing. I wish I could just bring that with me, but obviously it's not reasonable. I might have to invest in a better, I, I just got for uh, easy use for editing videos, but I might need to get a better one for streaming down the road. But there's my truck back there. I don't you guys can maybe see. Oh, there, oh wow, we're zooming. There we go. That's well, That's okay. There you go. You can see the tires, but obviously you'll get a better view uh, tomorrow when we do the video at the fortress and uh, I'm going to have a videographer with us, um, doing video. I'm, I don't know. We're, we're supposed to plan the content tomorrow, but I, dude, I just never had a videographer with me. So, um, just doing light interviews with soldiers that we can sharing my experience of what I'm seeing and what we're doing is probably the best thing that I can do. I'm not really a, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at video and stuff, but I'm much better on like talking to my community and my platforms than like entering We're here. Uh, you guys here? No. No, no, no. Oops. No, why is it? No, we need the headphones. All right, there's key. He's got full screen. We're here. And I took a, I took a long video. I took a long video just driving in too. Uh, and I'm gonna obviously do a, like a full video of the trip that I've done. It's just, it's not like extensive or a big documentary. It's really, really hard to drive, be a part of it, film it, you know, be a content creator. But I'm trying. You know, it's, it's a lot. But I, I took clips, you know, best as I can. This is a, just an example of like what you guys can expect from the video that I'm going to put together. But as soon as we were getting closer to Kiev, I uh, I just hit the record button because obviously it, it, I don't have enough internet to stream uh, in Kiev. Uh, so I just hit the record and and filmed driving around the city. And there's me and Alex, me and Alex there, two four nine and a and an AT four. It's just, and then also an N law with a, we got a suppressor on that, on that thing there and a site. That thing's awesome out there in the house slippers. So Alex had a, <laughs> Alex had an N law delivered too. <laughs> as well as, uh, hold on. There's, I can't remember what these are. It's like a, it's like a sausage. It's a English thing. Fritz in the chat, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a sausage with a, like a pastry on the outside. I don't know. Brits will know exactly what it is, but he got those as well for the Foreign Legion guy who's a Brit and he's out there. So he's uh, absolutely awesome. The sausage rolls. Yes, Ryan. Sausage rolls. Yep. So he, he brought sausage rolls to the, the Brit, British Foreign Legion and some other, some other drinks, which is awesome. Then there's me with the, with the AT4. I never, boy, there's me. 
out there at the Uggs on. The pigs in a blanket. <laughs> I keep zooming in. I try to see these pictures. Zoom out. All right, a couple more, or a few more posts. So that's when we had first arrived. I was tired as hell, but, you know, we were there. And then I, I decided to, hey, also shout out, big, big shout out, everyone. I, I put this call to action out, and so some good news. Some good news for you guys. I'm staying longer than uh, the, uh, the original time frame. I had, a, I had a feeling I was going to do this. I had a, and before I left, though, I was just full of stress. And I didn't, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to stick to the plan. You know, I don't know what it is out here, but thanks to the community. And I put this out there and I wrote, well, number one, uh, I used to, the, my biggest, the biggest reason for being banned, and I really didn't think it was a big deal. I just said, I, I just said something smart, but I don't even, I'm not even going to do that anymore. I'm just going to block trolls or not even respond if it's like a, on threads or something, or if it's on like a, more of a plat, if it's in my communities or on my, on my YouTube channel though, banned. But if it's on like a, you know, more of a public social media where I'm trying to gain new followers, I probably just won't engage at all, zero. But uh, yeah, that's the number one. The number two, I asked uh, if I decided to stay in Kiev until Thursday, a few extra days, you guys got me? Absolutely, the community did. So shout out to everyone, everyone. And listen, th those that sent like, you know, 20 bucks and you said, I don't have much, that is, you know, it's even sending me a dollar is plenty. You know, sending me 50 cents was plenty. You know, you did amazing helping keeping me here and I'm going to, I got to get the, the train ticket to Poland and the flight home and figure that out for next weekend, but I'm going to stay a whole week, another whole week. So I'm here until Thursday now, next week, instead of just Sunday. Boy, I was, but that was like, it's already what? It's already Saturday, right? Oh, Friday. Yeah, I would have had like another, I would have had today and tomorrow. That is absolutely not good. Like that is, it's not enough, especially since I, I saw how big the city is. This city is massive, massive, and it's tall. Like there's hills, there's so there's hills everywhere. So and this and there's big build, there's big skyscrapers on them too. So it's like not only is there a hill, but there's a giant building too. So it's like oh my goodness, you feel really small here. Like and I'm six foot, six foot two damn near, but the city's huge. It's it's not like. From what uh, when we watch the streams in in the beginning, you know, and it's just my Don and like a few places in my brain, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, you, it's not that big of a city because we only really saw fixed points, but it is uh, it is massive. And then I did this video walking around a little. Okay, made it. To Another reason why you should join our Discord server if you haven't. I can't like you know what I mean. I hope you guys understand YouTube. I can't I can't you know post like little clips and and posts like. I got to do long form. I got to do more long form content with you guys, which you guys like. Absolutely, that's why you're here. But you know, posting clips and like sharing little bits and pieces, you really got to go beyond YouTube and go to Discord, Telegram, even Facebook. Shit, I'm post. I have a big following on Facebook, so if you have that, follow me there too. Um, and then now Threads as well as uh, an Instagram. We're here. We have made it to Kiev. Beautiful city. Absolutely beautiful. I'm having tea, walking around a bit. We got dinner soon, but figure that tea was so good. I gotta get out and see some of this. So beautiful tea, city. Really Stay good. tuned, more to come. Boy, I went in there and I got a tea, and they gave me a cup of hot water, tea packet, and then two Ukrainian McDonald's uh, sugar packets, and that was that was really the only exploring I did. I didn't go. I didn't have time to go too far because we went to dinner. And I had Vereniki, which is like a, like a ravioli. And it was super, super good. And we had dinner. Dinner time with a special guest. Ukrainian cuisine rules. I mean, my body can confirm that. This is facts. We had like a full course meal before even the main one. Damn. I gotta like, uh, no, that's fine. They're not, I, I was going to write, I should write, they're featured, but they're not really featured yet. We're going to be doing content with Operator Starsky next week, too, you guys. Uh, as well, you do, Art, yo, Operator Star, yo, hey. Operator Starsky and Arter are, are as cool as they are in videos, in person. You know what I mean? You guys, you guys ever meet someone in person, and they're kind of like a letdown for, you know, damn, like you had a perception of them, and like you meet them, and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Like, this isn't the person who I thought they were. They're like different. No. They are exactly who they are. They're exactly who you guys think they are. 
both of them, both Archer and Operator Starsky. They're the same person in videos as they are in person. Very personable. Archer's awesome. Operator Starsky's obviously awesome. So, and, I, and I've, we've talked with Starsky. I just have never met Archer before. Or I have a, or Archer Ray, if you guys know. Um, but there we are together. We did a video. Or they, those two did a video of us sitting here. I suck at videos. I just took a picture of us. <laughs> and I, I figure I'll talk about it. But like my type of thing is, I mean, I'll do a video if like we're out there and shit. And we, and we will be. Starsky's going to be doing, a, Starsky again is going to be doing a tour of Hostimal. And I'm just going to be honest, like he's done that so many times now. And like it, people ask him about it all the time, but you know, it, it's what he does. And he's really good at explaining what happened there. And we're going to that tomorrow after we hand out the, uh, the vehicles to the soldiers. So we're going to Host Hostomol. We're going to spend a lot of time at the airport and he's going to talk about it with us there. But you guys have heard that experience, but it's, it's going to be, I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit if I can. You know, and be real and like talk to him a little bit more about it. And because he's done like Operator Starsky's done huge interviews about uh, about Hostimal. But we're gonna go there. I'm gonna see it for myself tomorrow after we hand the soldier after we hand the soldiers uh, their vehicles that they need. So there's Archer Starsky and me. Here's another picture of a. Uh, here's another picture of Kiev. Right? I just I just was walking around. Snap, dude. Like you could spend a whole like. Probably a whole week snapping pictures, and then you got to walk again another whole week just to see it again. But this is just like not even that far from where we're, you know, not even that far. Just a just a street corner. It's just huge, 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 huge city. Very big. Uh, it's it's amazing to see, you know, everyday life still going on. You know, you know, it's you, it has to. You know, I mean, you can't just sit for almost five hundred days, you know, in fear. Ukrainians are proving that. Yeah, they're proving that. You know, they beat the Russians in Kiev last year. Didn't allow them, uh, destroyed them. Didn't even allow them to get close to the city center. But you know, regular life is is going on. People are out taking video, laughing, uh, getting food. I mean, it's like a, you're in a, it's like you're in a regular city. Honestly, it's crazy to think. It's like you're in a you'd be in like a big major city. Pick one in the U.S. if you're from the U.S. or wherever you're from, and it's just like walking around. Traffic jams. Traffic's annoying uh you know common big city shit um you know what i mean but it's it's just really really cool really really cool so far and i've only seen a corner i've literally only seen a corner of you of kiev so far and from what i've seen it was just amazing just taking random pictures you know just taking random i mean a full full tourist mode it is what it is full tourism mode i don't even know what that says but that looked really cool and it was just underneath one of the buildings uh that i had walked past it's near the stadium Really cool, that stadium's huge too. Just showing you some of, the, some of what it looks like. This again, this is, one, this is just one street. I have only seen nothing. There's no OPSEC, okay? There's no OPSEC, stop that. I want everyone to stop with the OPSEC thing, okay? There's the only OPSEC, and again, it would be, if there's an air defense system around or whatever, and I'm not doing that, okay? Filming and walking around Kiev is absolutely fine, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't understand that thing, right? It's, there's nothing wrong with walking and filming and taking pictures in Kiev. Like, people do it every day. They're out there doing TikToks. They're out there walking around. It's everyday life. Now, if I was out near Hirson, Bakhmut, Z and Zaporizhia, then yes, like, obviously wouldn't be doing pictures and photos there, okay? It's, that's the front lines. Kiev is not the front lines. You can absolutely go there and do vlogs and whatever. It's just obviously no filming the police and no filming the soldiers those are the, and, the, and the air defense system, which you never see anyways. Uh, so those are like the three rules. No police, no soldiers, and no air defense system. But no, I haven't even, I've seen soldiers walking around, but I know that rule. Uh, and then, but that's the only OPSEC. There's no OPSEC for just being in Kiev and filming it. And then here is... Here is, uh, it actually stormed at night last night. It was like lightning and thundering. And it was just like a really cool view. So I just took a photo of like the lightning in the background with the buildings, which is uh, pretty awesome. Um, and then that's the photos and videos that I had really taken after I had left you guys on the live stream uh, last night going into Poland. So let's uh, check out the video from Operator Starsky, and I'm tagged in it, and you guys can check this out on obviously Operator Starsky's YouTube channel, as you guys know, but it's 
I'm in this one now, right? I started from at home and now we're here. Check out Starsky's video. It's like a three minute, three minute clip. Usually I don't celebrate. It's like Inception. <laughs> it's like Inception, y'all. All right, here we go. I don't celebrate birthdays because birthdays suck. And my birthday is on 9th of July, this Sunday, just in case you know. Uh, not even because they suck, but it's because probably, you know, over the years I've lost this magic of, you know, expecting a holiday, uh, presents, uh, the friends, the people. And we're going to spend, speaking of his birthday, we're doing a, sh a stream on Sunday with the shills now. And I wasn't going to be able to do that because obviously we're going to we had to leave. But now I'm just I'm just here. And my stay in Ukraine. So extend. Well, I got to extend my hotel or wherever I'm going to stay. Uh, I'll figure that out. Like I could probably just stay in this hotel for another week. We'll see what the price is. We'll see uh, how expensive it's going to be, uh, or if a B and B, you know, whatever is going to be easier. But we're I'm here until Sunday in this hotel. But it would be too easy to extend this room, obviously. Uh, but his birthday is on Sunday, and we're going to do a stream together with on Beyond the Shills. So I'll tell you guys how to get to that YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, also, I think we're doing something Saturday night. I don't know. He, he, we're going to. I'm going to take him to. You want? He loves KFC for real, y'all. He really does love KFC. That you like to see. Uh, at the same time, Arthur Ray is here in Kiev. Mercado will arrive to Kiev in just a uh, several minutes. That's me. I'm here. Yulia, a friend of mine from Lviv, you know, Yulia. It's easy. He talked about how excited he was going to take her to the museum, specifically the toilet museum. Uh, he Dostarsky loves museums. I do too, though. Anyone like museums? I'm a big museum person, and apparently Kiev has some of the most bomb museums, including the Toilet Museum, so I want to check that out. She is also in Kiev, and if it's not magic, then I don't know what the magic is. And then also speaking of magic, I had a big issue on the way here. Um, I don't know, it's, pers it's whatever, dude. I had a... I don't even. I had a, an issue with my body that it just was incredibly painful to drive. Uh, I couldn't even sit. Like I had to adjust for the whole thing. Like I was in. Like it was so bad. Like if anyone in the NAFO convoy will tell you how the shape I was in driving. Like it was horrible. Uh, but as soon as I got to Kiev, it's like as soon as I got here, all my issues went away. Like all my physical issues, everything that I had is gone now, and I can like r walk around and do everything. But I like was I could not. I could hardly even walk uh, due to, no, I could hardly even walk on the convoy. It was horrible. So I'm going to go and meet my friends and we'll see you there. Some of y'all are guessing that, yeah. Look how big, the, you can see in those videos how big the city is though. Finding a parking spot in Kyiv is a very, very hard task. That's something you should know. Oh, by the way, I have this patch. Hey! <laughs> you must have. Hey, bro. Oh, how, how are, are you? you? Oh, fantastic, bro. I felt like, I felt like the Shell's t-shirt was appropriate. If you know, you know. How was hey. it? It was a long drive, you know, it was about 30 hours, but we're here now. It's just amazing. It's, it's warm. It's very hot. It's Welcome sweating. to Kiev, bro. Nice Absolutely, to see you here. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. Hello, friends. Operator Starsky. I'm still in Kiev. Arthur still hates dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> So, uh, why are you here, guys? I'm here to uh, support the NAFO fundraiser. Amazing fundraiser. You know, delivering vehicles directly to the Ukrainian soldiers is incredible. It's an opportunity that uh, has really 
touched me. And to be able to do this and not only just do it from afar and give money, but also be a part of it uh, and come to Ukraine is incredible. And I'm here because the Night Vision fundraiser that I did with my viewers about three months ago, um, and the money came through immediately, but the Estonian Foreign Ministry took three months to accept the foreign li to export license. And now we're finally able to bring those night visions to the Ukrainian units. So tomorrow we'll be giving those night visions and 15 trucks to the units. And that's why we're both here. And uh, as I said, we have friends and this matters a lot. So we'll see you later. Stay safe. All right, we had dinner. That was the dinner. I took the video with Starsky. We went outside and just did a quick little video, right? Quick little video. So that's like the day one experience right there. The day one experience. All right, a few videos and news while I'm here, right? I'm here now. I'm here in Ukraine. So might as well give you the news from Ukraine while we're at it too. Russia's losses as of July 6th, 232,300, another 600 troops, 15 APVs, 23 vehicles and fuel tanks, another 22 artillery systems, just hammering those, 21 UAVs, nine anti-aircraft and seven special equipment. And that is Russia's losses as of July 6th. So they're a little bit over the average, about 600, which was, uh, which was awesome to see. Right? And more Russians continue. If the Vladimir Putin would pull the troops out, then you know there wouldn't be any more Russian losses, and it would stop there. And when we look at the map, the only real map changes and the only real things that is going on is Bakhmut, to be honest. Ukrainian soldiers are on the flanks of Bakhmut. They continue to try to expand their influence in the northern sector. Right, the Ukrainians are on the flanks to the north and also to the south, and they're continuing to push into that territory. Right? We haven't seen many changes uh, territorial-wise, but on all fronts, I mean, the, if we, we, when we don't see changes, that's a good thing while we're in the Ukrainian counteroffensive. That means the Russians aren't pushing back on any of these Ukrainian uh, counteroffensive positions. Over here, like yesterday, I forgot, I didn't do the news yesterday, so I guess I'll cover the, what I missed from yesterday. But over here in the Vaslivka direction, south of Lobkov, Ukrainians continue to expand their counteroffensive direction here to the south. Then over just directly to the east, what is this, south of Orykchiv, they continue to expand their counteroffensive positions. It's not nothing major yet, but you know what I mean? It's still gained ground. It's still absolutely gained ground, and the Russians aren't doing anything. And then south of Huliopol, they continue to get closer to Marfopil, and also along the T0, uh, T0, 401 Highway, south towards Dozhnerivka. They continue to try to get down to the second line of defense down there. We know that the, the Ukrainians are really working in Velka Novosilka. You can see how far that thing's getting now and how big this uh, counteroffensive region is at this point. And they continue to expand that. It, again, it's all, it's, it's like, a, it's like, but on the whole, on the whole front not just in Bakhmut, right, or not just in one specific area. It's in Zaporizhia, it's in Donetsk. It's a little bit in Kherson, a little bit down here in Kherson, across the river into the islands, for example. And then also, obviously, up here that I just mentioned, ba I mean, it's like the whole thing over here now, Bakhmut, uh, Toretsk, and Advidka, because the Ukrainians in Advidka, for example, this is north of Donetsk, they are just absolutely gaining ground back. Like, uh, and this is the 2014 territory. This is, this is the Russians have had this south of Adv Advivka for to about 10 years, right? And, and Donetsk. Donetsk, Donetsk city is like directly south of that, right? And you can see the Ukrainians are pushing all around Advivka and gaining some ground there, which is absolutely huge. And then also just to the north of that in Toretsk, which is here, uh, south of Toretsk, Ukrainians are pushing and gaining ground there, right? Which is great to see. And then obviously, to the north of there is Bakhmut. Oops. To the north, to the north of here. Oh, come on. Come on, laptop. To the north of here is Bakhmut. And we just talked about that. I got to zoom out even farther now. It's like the further, the, the longer that this part is happening, the more I'm zooming out, honestly. Right? The more I'm zooming out to show you guys because it's, uh, it's taking up so much space of in terms of where the Ukrainians are in the counteroffensive. So it's to the north of Bakhmut, but then it's also here to the south of Seversk, which is just absolutely uh, amazing to see, right? Here's Seversk. This is like the K254 Brigade direction, right? And you expand in their territory over here, right? Multiple locations, oh, also right here, where the counteroffensive is ongoing. And so it looks like uh, in this direction, this is like the Solodar Seversk direction. 
Uh, it looks like the Ukrainians are about to sandwich Soledar if they can continue, right? Like this is north of Bakhmut, and obviously we're talking, we're going to be looking for like an encirclement of the city at some point. But I mean, you're just looking at what's happening here. This is heading towards Soledar, and then obviously here to the north of Soledar, it's looking like a, a sandwich situation. Like they're going to we like pancake the Russians in Soledar, and then they'd be able to go down to Bakhmut. But then also the the efforts to the south of Bakhmut are getting close, like. They got Kostivka there and a few other cities that they need to liberate. Of Like, for real, there's already been rumors that they're in Kostivka, but due to, due to actual operational security chat, not walking around vlogging in Kiev, <laughs> uh, but due to actual operational security information about what's coming out there is obviously at a 24 to 48 hour delay. So it's not, it was talked about yesterday uh, in a few places, but I don't see it reflected on the study of war map yet. But again, that could be at a delay. I didn't really get to keep up with the news yesterday. I, I, before I went live here, I briefly touched on some, some of the, the places and things I go to for information. Uh, but I don't see it, the, the information from two days ago when I went live from, uh, from Talon. Uh, I, I saw that there was a big push towards Kostivka in the south. And that could, that could have happened, but it's just not reflected yet, likely due to operational security information. Okay, and a few other things. This happened in Lviv today. And uh, Lviv, if you don't know, Lviv is the major city to the west, like after Poland. And we went through there. So it's, right, it's over here, right? Western, so I'll do the full screen quick. So here's where Lviv is. Bam, right there. Western Ukraine. Does that look anywhere close to the front lines? Not excusing anything the Russians are doing in Ukraine at all. The, not excusing the bullshit invasion. But it's, you know, Ukrainians are fighting them right now. But with that being said, is that anywhere close to the front lines? No. It's a complete, like, an utter uh, choice terrorist attack that the Russians do, right? So Lviv, and this happened while we were actually rolling through. While we were rolling through the, the town, and luckily uh, we, were, we were past the point that we were, we were like, uh, on the outskirts, and we had passed the point of the strike. So, but in the actual city itself, this had happened. Lviv, consequences of the night attack by Russian terrorists, unfortunately. There are wounded and dead. My condolences to the relatives. This is from President Zelensky. Horrible. You can see the the workers already in the buildings. Look at the fr the, fr the front line responders. No audio on this video, though. Let me make, hold on, let me make sure Twitter, it's not just a fucking Twitter thing. It should be fine. Let me make sure it's, let me make sure, I, mean, I don't think there's audio. Even though I'm suspended, I still freaking come here. Hello, I'm John okay. Sweeney. We're good, he's not in Ukraine, so. It's not in Kyiv right now either, by the way, y'all. So the aftermath of the strike in Lviv today. Let me see if Zelensky did an appeal talking about it and play that quick. It showed the, the aftermath of the there. West Kyiv, or excuse me, western city in Ukraine. Uh, he, Zelensky was doing meetings today. He might not have. No, he didn't. I don't think he's posted as, no, he didn't. No, he's busy today. What does this say? Glad to meet with the president of the Czech Republic. Okay, President Pavel. He was, he was in, okay. Video. You can see he's busy in meetings all day today. If you guys understand, like the 30-hour drive, I usually spend uh, during, I usually spend my day doing Ukraine war research. But uh, we, I was driving here, so I really couldn't. And then I, I slept. We went out to the dinner for that video you guys had watched with Archer and myself and Starsky. After dinner, I came here and crashed hard. And I'm going to sleep again here for a, a couple more hours before we got to get up and go to the fortress. 
but it is a it is a, a good you know good that I'm here now. That's all I gotta say about that. That I'm glad I'm here and can share the experience with you guys. So Ukraine GoPro Part One. This is the series that we've been watching, I believe, of uh, Civ Divs, and I'm only gonna play this one for combat videos. Hope you understand. I gotta get I gotta get back to sleep for a little bit. Um, and obviously I'm here now, so my experiences will be what I'll be talking about more so than just playing videos for you guys. Uh, so this is Ukraine GoPro part one of the counteroffensive riding to the front line. This was just posted a few hours ago. Did you, hey, did you see the drone? So let's check this out. Civ Div. It's about a 20 minute video anyways. If you guys haven't liked the video, make sure you subscribe. If you make, like the video, subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new. We do live streams. I'm a live streamer. More than I, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to work on videos though and do that more. Doing it before I had left, uh, but I'm gonna do more of those when I get back. I'm putting a video together of my trip, but we do live streams here. Yeah, I build a, I've always done that for over three years now. Three years of live stream content, but I use other platforms for video clips and postings and whatnot. And all over the place. Okay. June 10th, Zepp reads the counteroffensive part one. This is part one of a long string of videos that was taken by a friend Arnie with the permission of his command. This takes place in one of the first days of the counteroffensive actions in the southern front line. The first part is only ingress. It gets quite exciting at parts, but if this isn't your cup of tea, that's fine. So it looks like this is from the perspective of the soldiers that are going to dismount, huh? Holy sh**, Hilo! Alright, All right, we're getting close, bro. That's a Russian Hilo, which is incredibly dangerous for their armored column. This is why Ukraine needs F-16s so badly. Riding in the back of a Husky armored transport vehicle. Ukrainian fields too, by the way, from, from what I saw from Lviv to Kiev, they're massive, huge. Just fields and fields and fields of, uh, of crops and, and farmland, like massive. It's like you live in Wisconsin or the Midwest, but at larger scale. Arnie is extremely experienced. Most of the combat footage on my channel is given by him. He's taken out a BMP near Kupiansk with an Enla, taken out multiple Russians with a drone, and helped take out multiple Spetsnaz in a house. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. During these videos, we'll see him evacuate wounded and also be wounded himself for the second time in his career. The first wound was near Kupiansk when he just got finished taking out a BMP and a team of Spetsnaz. Their objective is to take a tree line position from the Russians, but this mission turns upside down when they're given a different task of supporting an adjacent unit that's been encircled. During these videos, it'll intertwine some of the footage from another member of my old team, Cognac. He was a turret gunner for the MRAP right behind them. Each of them have spent well over a year in Ukraine, constantly doing missions of all kinds. You can now see the turret gunner has rockets at the ready, which makes this husky a little more capable. Bro, you're not telling me that everybody's backing up now. Yeah, 
Do you have any new viewers in the chat tonight? Anyone new to the channel? Any new Operator Starsky subscribers that are watching? He's been posting on his channel and adding to our channel. So. Now we probably have new, new uh, community members now. Arnie is the RPG gunner, so he uses the time to make sure his stuff is all set up. That tube holds the booster rocket for the RPG warhead. You have to twist it into the back of the grenade. Having anti-tank armor capabilities with you on hand is vitally important in this war and type of attack they're about to conduct. Civdiv's YouTube channel, Sharon Combat, GoPro. The only air raid alert we heard was through Lviv right now. There hasn't been one tonight here in Kyiv. At least not in the area, at least not in the downtown area. We got a area. tank in front of us now. That? Oh yeah, I see it. Please try to remember, Kiev is not, the Russians aren't anywhere near Kiev anymore. They destroyed the Russians last year. I'm in the capital city of Kiev, and the, the threat of the Russians around the city is non-existent other than ballistic attacks that try to here. But beyond that, the, it's, uh, the front lines are far from here. T-64. Okay. I did install the air raid app, yes. All right, hey. Small arms fire all over the place. And it is beautiful. It's it, we're driving through there. Ukraine. Yeah. It's like, how could there be a how can there be a war happening? What are we right? staying here? How can the Russians in, like invade this? Bro, 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 such bro a, come on. An act of genocide be happening to these people like this. I hope he's only waiting for them to catch up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. the fact that the turret operator should look left, ready to engage any targets as they approach closer to the fence. Seems like we're first Vic again. Yeah. Vic. Being the first vehicle is terrifying for obvious reasons, but someone has to do it. Facts. Alright, we're parallel to them. Yeah. They try to keep spatial awareness to reduce the fog of war. We're at least in the tree line. Yeah, uh, just casually walking. Yeah, right. They're arriving at one of my frontal positions, there are typically multiple lines of positions, and each step they have no idea if it's the first or third. I call my first mission, you usually don't know the first line is when you're arriving, you don't know when you're being targeted until you get hit. Right. 
Hey, anyone know a good app for blurring too? And having and having blurring on? Maybe I could ask Starsky too tomorrow. Tree lines are the only source of concealment in the south, so both the Russians and Ukrainians use them to build positions. Hey, quiz. What's the difference between cover and concealment? Comment in the chat. Pop quiz. Nice to know when we actually cross the line. Yeah. Already quite stressful for them as they can't distinguish one identical field from the next. Most of you guys are getting it exactly correct, yep. There you go. So like cover, you got like just imagine this. So like cover, you got a like a concrete barrier. You know, like a T wall or something, something to like cover behind. Bullets are coming in; they're generally gonna do like direct, like you can like take cover behind it. Concealment is like a tree line, you know, uh, bushes, things you can't really see, but you can still get, you know, bullets come in there. You're still gonna get hit, but at least it's harder to see you. Yeah, you guys are good. Good shit. Yeah. Most of y'all. I think that's why he's waiting for everybody to catch up. Drone. And when you blend them together, and you got cover and concealment, that's usually the optimal situation. Oh, he, he's already saying it. Did you, hey, did you see the drone? Dobre, dobre, dobre. This kind of operation is particularly mind-numbing as they have to watch for drones in the sky. Just a pucker, just a, a constant pucker factor. Impacts are everywhere, pointing out that they are nearing the front. All right. Stay on that side. Doesn't matter. To it's me also, you. it doesn't matter. I just want to see what you were seeing. All right. When you're in the military, having conversations are direct. Say the small talk for back home, or when you get back to the rear. He doesn't look happy. Yep, yeah, this is the same convoy we've been watching, just a different vehicle and different perspective. Sivdiv said he's got like an 11 part series for this. He's scanning for drones and looking at the sky. A lot of standing. As they wait here, you can see you can start heading out 
Sorry. As they wait here, you can start hearing outgoing indirect fire prepping the targets just prior to their assault. That sounded more like incoming, but a kilometer away, the drone they saw was likely the spotter for the Russians. Craters like right there. I think it's getting hot now. Yeah. Look, the look how close those craters are. Artillery is good for attrition. Preoccupying the enemy, but the only sure way of taking over position is by sending in a man. Sorry, sending in a man, what? With a rifle. Attritionally. Is that a new word? Oh, my brain was breaking with attritionally. So there's no way I don't know this one. What's going on? Now that. Bila. Bila? Da. Praporet. What does that mean? Mitka. Mina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mitka. Da. I don't know what Mitka means, bro. I'm going to look up Mitka through translator, it means mark. If anyone knows, please tell in the comments below. It's difficult for foreigners to learn the language here because in certain areas people speak Ukrainian or Russian. Lots of times as a foreigner you stick to the Ukrainians you know English and have them translate because you're too busy to study language on Duolingo or something. It's quite stressful when you're driving to the front, especially when you don't speak the same language. It takes a lot of trust. Hopefully it doesn't rip. Cutting this part because they're just away. waiting. Hurry up and wait. You've probably seen this group of vehicles published from the Russian drone footage. They're great for getting a team into the fight. But without air superiority, they're not as useful as they could be. Facts. That's why everyone's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. They're like, they, if, you have air, if you have air power and air superiority, it's you don't have to rely on your ground vehicles the entire time. It's like a, an assistant to the air power, honestly. The air, po the air power you know, does, does its work, and then you can go in. But. Thank you for the members, for your generals, continual support. Operator! I gotta become a member of his channel too because we look at his videos, so I, I'll become a member. All right, when I get home though. All right, y'all, that is Civ Divs.
series that we've been going through, and that is really the news that I have for y'all, all right? So I'm here now, right? I'm here myself, so things that we, can, uh, things that I can talk about and to share my experiences. Uh, I went through the day already at the beginning of this stream with the with videos and Operator Starsky and Arter, and it's a great experience. Tomorrow we're handing off the soldiers, or excuse me, we're handing off the trucks to the soldiers uh, at the fortress, and then we'll be uh, going to Hostomol and seeing the airport and uh, what had happened there. And then I believe we're doing something with the Armed Forces of Ukraine on Saturday. I think we're doing something cool with them. I don't know. I can't. I don't know if there's going to be video of it or what. I kind of hope there is because what I've heard is sounds badass, but. We'll have to find out. Obviously, I have to wait and see. But you guys can expect uh, just kind of more chill content, walking around Kiev and seeing things like the Maidan and uh, probably in, uh, by next week, by Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, I'm here all those days. I can just walk around Kiev. I'll be with Starsky, a lot of it. And I'll be showing you guys all of that. But we're, we're pretty busy tomorrow, pretty busy Saturday, Sunday, is Starsky's birthday. Uh, but you expect the Maidan and chilling, and maybe I'll do like a war diary. I'll hold in. I'll stand in for John. I'll stand in for John and do a war, a Kiev diary from uh, Maidan there. Also, share the stream to a friend. Share the stream to a friend. Uh, we're one of the few, uh, besides Archer, um, you know, our, uh, that's from a, and I mean, but Brandon's directly involved. Right? He's a in the he's in the hospital years. Brandon Mitchell, Ukraine, the best I can, but. I mean, Starsky's in the Ukrainian military, you know what I mean? But not many other YouTubers are come to Ukraine, especially American ones. There's, I think, uh, uh, the NAFO convoy. I'm the fifth American ever, the fifth one. Of all the NAFO, there's been 18 NAFO convoys here bringing trucks to Ukraine, and I'm the fifth American in, in total, in, in general. So share the stream to a friend if anyone's interested in learning about Ukraine war. So just some of the support from the community here. From Ozzy, thank you so much for the gifteds. Josh, thank you. Tim, not much, but use it for extended Ukraine stay. Thank you so much. And again, I'm going to be putting in a, a two to $3,000 back towards the NAFO brigade because I do get paid towards the end of the month. So I can like match what you guys have been sending to me so far for extending my stay right back towards the NAFO brigade. We can get that third truck cooking, right? We'll likely have the patches, the, the Mercado Media patch ready to go. Allison, welcome. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you for, the, thank you for that. Popeye. Uh, good look, good job with everything. Anne says, Kiev is so beautiful. Ozzy with the gifted. Thank you. Carolyn, thank you, Wendy. Uh, David says, so proud of you, Andrew. Aubrey says, so proud of you, Andrew. Nurse says, how much Ukrainian have you used? I know yes and no. The best phrase you can say, Ukrainians know you appreciate that they speak English. Uh, not much at all. I'm, I got to learn words. I, I learned Estonian a little bit, like some, some words, and now I got to learn more. Uh, just basic Ukrainian uh, words beyond just hello and goodbye. Carol, thank you. Benny, thank you so much. Noel, thank you. Uh, 2M2S, what up, Andrew? Glad you're safe. Thank you. Cho Choi, Judy, Leah. Uh, David says, stay as long as you need, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, I got The thing is, the reason I can't stay longer than just next week is I back in March, I already planned my 30th birthday trip. So it's And this isn't, listen, yeah, I know a lot of comments and said this is like a once in a lifetime. No, I'm going to come back. We'll be back here again, like likely with the NAFO convoy. There's there's plenty of people that are on this con that were on this convoy that this is like their third, second convoy, second, third. Obviously, Ragnar and Dimitri and the NAFO guys, they've been they've been done this, but there's uh, like uh, Alex. This is his second one. Uh, I want to do more than just one. So, Mike, thank you. Andrea, uh, so proud of you for doing this. Thank you. Linda, thank you. David, wish I was with you. Thank you. Uh, Don says, if you join the Forward Legion, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. The way, see, the way my knees are set up and the way my back and everything, you know, I, I can't, you know, see, it's just, uh, I can't. I would be, I would be probably contributing uh, less than what I could. I got to get back in shape, uh, which I'm going to plan to do when I get home. I'm not, uh, these health issues I have, I got, I'm done. I don't have any more health problems. Gym, uh, eating healthier, because 30 is coming. And I, a couple, I turned 30 on July 19th. So, and health problems are here. Eddie, keep following your passion for reporting. Thank you. Slim chances, have a good trip. Be safe. Michelle, thank you. Tony with the five gifted, thank you. Idol eight, you got courage to go there. Thank you so much. Good on you. Stay safe. Sonke, five gifteds. Ozzy, five gifteds. Lynn, hope happy you are safe. Thank you. Go, uh, go fast, don't die. Five gifted memberships. 
Indian dude says, share your thoughts on Ukraine and Kyiv when you have time. Uh, give me, uh, I mean, I have just general impressions, which I already gave at the start of the stream. But you're gonna get, you got to give me until like, I get home, as I've only seen literally a corner. I drove into Kyiv, and I've only seen a corner of it. And the, the city's massive. I, gotta, I really got to spend a few days before I give like, a, a full, like what I think. It's just too much. It's just impossible. Uh, Jay Plum, thank you so much. And then Lou says, outstanding effort. Thank you so much for that support. All right, you guys. Well, if you're brand new to the channel, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell. All right. And also, uh, the, the new social, obviously, join our Discord server, join our Telegram channel, but also uh, join our Discord. And I posted the link to Threads on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, and you decide to join Threads, it's like the new Twitter, basically. Uh, I think it's better. It's going to be better. So, uh, I'm, but I'm using that for the same purpose that I use Twitter for, like, like a, like you know, Discord and uh, Telegram and even the YouTube community tab are really just kind of like Mercado Media focused. Like it's just our, it's our sphere, like our community. Whereas like uh, things like Twitter, which I used, to, I can't, I don't have anymore, but Threads, that's how I reach new people. Like my Facebook page that I use, I'd like people share that and I can get new followers. Kind of hard with, and just within the community to reach new people. The streams help in doing YouTube videos because uh, it shows up in the watch page, but you know, like expanding the people that follow me, I got to at least go to another one. So Threads is a really, really good option. So thank you so much, all new subscribers that have came from Starsky's channel and beyond and all of my community arc hunters that have been supporting since last year. More content to come here from Kiev, Ukraine. Go check out Operator Starsky's video. If you missed it, I went through it here during the stream. Uh, Archer is also putting one out. I don't know when that'll be posted, but you can expect that eventually. And then I'm doing videos too as well. All right, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, it's almost, uh, it's, it's 5.30 in the morning here. So I got like a couple hours of sleep and then I got to get up and we got shit to do. So I'll likely uh, post what I can. What is it? Uh, it's 9.25. Yeah, it'll be sleepy time for most of y'all. When I posted the first post, it, most of y'all were asleep already. My European audience, though, is loving it. I know my Euro and uh, Australian audience are loving the fact that I'm posting at their normal times for once. Uh, but my U.S. audience, just keep your notification bell on. Join our Discord server, like I had said. Telegram channel's great. That's expanding. Um, and then Threads, which is another great choice. And if you, if you follow on Facebook already, if you came here from Facebook, thank you also to my Mercado Media Facebook audience. I just have a laptop here. I don't have the processing power to do a multi-stream to both platforms. It would likely be a mess. It would be a mess and it wouldn't be smooth. So thank you everybody that's came over here and supported the YouTube channel. More content and things to come live from Kiev, Ukraine. Have a wonderful night, you guys. See you guys on the next one. Take care.